Hey everybody, it's me, Stacy, here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, and it's time for Saturday with Stacy, YouTube number 265. This is a redo. I've already done this YouTube yesterday, but I still can't get it to load properly. I got it to load, but boy, I was as Christina said, SMS girl Christina said, you look retro. <laughs> You look vintage because it was really grainy. So I'm trying again to see if I can figure out the adjustments and the settings that are all now required because everything has changed, but I will get there. I will persevere and I will learn how to do this because I will. <laughs> if I learned how to pick up a video camera years ago, I can figure this out too. Now today I have got for you a super fun field YouTube. It is using product that has been around for quite some time that I had no idea was even on the market by this company and some um, some older technique that you might have already seen, you probably already know about, but we're just gonna go over it one more time because it all works together. We are featuring products from Arc on Wild. Now, Arc on Wild is a brand and a company. The company's name is Arc on Wild and Friends. And you're like, well, what does the friends mean? Well, Arc on Wild and Friends not only does stamps and a few dies under the Arc on Wild brand that you see out there, but have you ever seen Versus stamps? Or you know I love Northwood stamps, we carry Northwood stamps. Or the cutest things ever, the Darcy's with the little tin pins, oh my gosh, they're darling. And then there's of course Inky Antic stamps, and probably the most popular, the most well-known, I guess I would say, would be Stampers Anonymous. So if you have any stamps that say Stampers Anonymous, well, that's not the company, that's the brand. The company is actually Art Gone Wild and they also do, like I said, Versus and Northwoods and Inky Antics and Darcy's and I, I mean, it's just wonderful. So you know the quality of product you're getting because by George, this truly is a stamp company. That is what they do. They make stamps. And if their stamps are good enough for Tim Holtz, well, by George, <laughs> they're good enough for us. <laughs> I just love that they have so many different brands that we can focus on. And that makes my heart happy because each brand has this, has a different feel and style to it. So even though they're all manufactured by the same company, each designer of each brand has their own signature and their own flair, and I get to play with all of it. So I am featuring today their Reveal Wheel, which is a die. Now, I had no idea that this Reveal Wheel has been out forever. They, I think they are the first to come out with a Reveal Wheel die, maybe. It's been a long time since they've had it. But now Reveal Wheels have become the woohoo ka out there. And so when I was talking to him, they said, well, we have a reveal wheel. And it's like, you do? <laughs> so they sent me samples of it and so cute, so cute. But then I thought, you know, gosh, wouldn't it be fun to have a, a, a couple sets of stamps myself to go with the reveal wheel? And they said, well, we think that would be fun too. So they were so kind and we have three exclusive stamp sets for you today that work with and without their reveal wheel. So, I, and and I, I'm sure that one of these stamps will forever be exclusive because the name of it is Stacy Brations. <laughs> I don't know that any other retailer is going to want a stamp that says, Woohoo Kachu or Holy Smokes Artichokes. But today, today for you, I have stamps that say Woohoo Kachu, Holy Smokes Artichokes, Easy Peasy, <laughs> Mac and Cheesy. It's it's gonna be a great time. I also have winner winner chicken dinner to talk about. So let me put on my glasses so I can see what I'm doing. Are you ready? Okay, so last week we did the Prima No Heat to Foil card kits. There were the two card kits, they were part of a flash sale. And we incorporated those with Yasutomo origami paper, which was so beautiful. We didn't origami anything with it. It was just the most beautiful paper I had ever seen that we had to carry it. And it makes stunning, stunning matting paper. Beautiful, and it has, it has foiling effects built into it. So we played with all of that, and uh, we played with some Couture Creations foil, and I showed you how to use an Essentials glue pad to use foil as well and then fill it in with glitter. So do you want to know if you're a winner winner chicken dinner because you're going to get that the Prima uh, foil card kit bundle and you're going to get some of that Yasutomo 
paper. I still want to say Yasumoto. I want to say Yasumoto so bad, but it's not. It's Yasutomo. And I've like had my, my hands left. It's Yasutomo. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get that down. So do you want to know if you're a winner, winner, chicken dinner? Easy peasy. If you are, oh, I can read this name almost without my glasses. I can pronounce it and everything. Peggy Terry. Congratulations, Peggy Terry. You are a winner, winner, chicken dinner here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, but you are not alone. Rosanna, Rosanna Crawford. I can read your name too. You're also a winner, winner, chicken dinner here at Scrapbooking Made Simple. So girls, you're a winner, chicken dinner. Rosanna and Terry. Our, is it Terry? Wait a minute. No, it's Peggy Terry. Rosanna and Peggy are winners. Chicken dinners. <laughs> okay, girls, how are you going to claim your prizes? You're going to go to scrapbookingmadesimple.com. You're going to look for the link that says winner, winner, chicken dinner. You're going to follow the directions. We will confirm you are indeed our winner and get your prizes right out to you. Another big announcement, anniversary sale is next Saturday. Next Saturday is our anniversary sale and it is a whopper. We have Ozzy Andrew flying in from, from Australia. We have Jackie from Ark on Wild flying in from back east and they are gonna be doing in-store free make and takes for everybody. We have prizes. It is the time when I do my YouTube and we will have a hundred prizes for all of you on YouTube. A hundred people are gonna win a prize. Um, we've got door buster deals and free gifts, even for you online peeps. If you place an order during the event, we've got a free gift for you too. I've got a go press and foil at an amazing price, the machine at an amazing price. So next Saturday is our, our anniversary sale. So we hope that you come and celebrate it. And if you're anywhere where you can get to Southern California and come see us, the most important thing I have for you is cake with buttercream frosting. Yes, everything else is just peripheral. It's all about the cake here at SMS. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna tilt down for today. We are going to get started, and I hope that you have a good time with this YouTube. It really is just a fun YouTube. Some things you might not have known, some things you might not have seen, and then a recap if you have. But let's get started, okay? I'm gonna tilt on down. I'm gonna put my winner winners away and bring over the free make and take that's going on downstairs right now. Down we go. Bye everyone. Oh, and let you know that the Spellbinder Warehouse sale is continuing. Oh, wrong button. Gosh, I look kind of crooked, don't I? How's that? Oh, that's so much better. And then down, and then in, no, in. Oh, I'm so nervous about this camera. I tell you, I'm so nervous. <laughs> I don't know if, I'm, if I've got it right or not. Well, I can't really, I can't tell. So let's hold something up and let me see. Because all I've got is literally a little three by three viewfinder to, to guesstimate whether I'm close or not. All right, how's that? This is the make and take that's going on downstairs right now. And it is a reveal wheel. So wahoo, kachoo. Holy Smokes Artichokes, Winner Winner Chicken Dinner, Easy Paisy Mac and Cheesy, Wahoo Kachoo, Happy Birthday, Super Fun, Super Easy. We did made the background paper here, we stamped here, we did the reveal. It's all in the stamp set that um, was done exclusively for me. Here it is in red. So fun, so cute. Who isn't going to love to get a wheel that turns with all the sentiments? This is great for kids. This is a cute kid card. This is great for absolutely everybody. And it is so easy. Oh, I hear you. Don't make a noise. It's so easy. Don't make a noise. That everybody's going to be able to do this. The reveal, everything, the little pocket, it is so easy peasy and the coloring is very easy. So the coloring is where I'm gonna start and then we're gonna get into die cutting. And today I am gonna be using 
a Spellbinders Platinum 6. So let me bring over, this is the set I'm going to start with, which is one of the exclusive sets for Scrapbooking Made Simple. And you can see it's got Wahoo Kachu and Holy Smokes Artichokes and Winner Winner Chicken Dinner and Easy Peasy Mac and Cheesy. That's the wheel. But it also has Happy Birthday, Let's Party, Congratulations, You Did It. It has the balloons and the party hat and the graduation cap and the diploma and things for baby so that it's an all-purpose set, so you can use it again and again and again. You know, congratulations, wahoo, katru, holy smokes, artichokes, congratulations, you did it. I mean, you can just use it over and over again. But the nice thing about it is that you can incorporate some of the other sets. I'm looking for, I'm looking for the birthday set that I really like. Oh, there it is. So this is one of their other sets that they did before mine that they've had for a long time and this is also a wheel set and this is the wheel and it has little confettis all over it but it's got that really great cake and it's got a happy birthday wheel well you could take that really great cake along with my balloons and my little party hat and make up a whole new a whole new set a whole new card using different elements from the different stamp sets they're really quite usable and functional and i really really like them so we're going to start stamping and i am going to start with this set and i'm going to play with the balloons and I'm going to bring my set on over. And like I said, I have three that are exclusive to Scrapbooking Made Simple. I'm very lucky. They were very kind and said, oh, sure, we'll be happy to do that for you. And I said, thank you. I actually think it was their idea to do the Stacyisms. It was not mine. I'm like, really? You really think that I should do that? And they're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I'm taking a gush pad, and this is actually half the size of a, of a simply refined gush pad. And what is a gush pad? It's a foam pad, and it's at a certain density so that when you stamp, your paper sinks into it, your stamp sinks into your paper, and you get a better contact. It can be a little challenging to stamp on a hard surface because your paper has nothing to sink into. Your stamp can't make the best contact with your paper. So if you're struggling with stamping, then I suggest you try a gush pad. Ours is $1.99 and it's twice the size. Doris has one that's really big for $3.99. It doesn't really matter whose gush pad you get, just so long as you get one, because I think that you'll find that your stamping becomes much better, especially if you're doing a big background stamp and you end up having holes all the time. So I'm gonna ink up my stamp. Did you see I inked up my stamp? That's all I did. I didn't do, well, what's for breakfast today? Have you had a good day? What did you do? Tell me, you know, tell me what you watched on TV last night. This is an awful lot of ink. It does not require that much ink. It really just requires you to get your outline inked up with the with the color and then go. So I'm going to do one, two, three, A, B, C, and up I go. You don't want to push too hard. So again, that's all the ink I'm going to do. One, two, three, A, B, C. Looky, see, beautiful. I'm not doing chest compressions when I'm stamping. I'm just giving nice all over pressure. One, two, three, A, B, C. I'm not doing this. I'm just down and up. Oh, snap, look at how good those look. Now, why do we like Memento ink? We like Memento ink because it is not movable with water or liquid. Whereas a lot of dye-based inks like your Oxide inks or your Tim Holtz inks or even your Tombow markers, they're a dye-based ink, but they're meant to move with water. Memento stays in place. That way, if you are using watercolor pencils or you're painting in with something or you're using your alcohol markers, the black is not gonna smear. Today, today I'm just going to play with colored pencils. And I am using colored pencils by Kaiser Craft. They're a lovely colored pencil. It doesn't really matter whose colored pencil we're going to be working with. If you've got Faber-Castell or if you've got, um, gosh, who all makes colored pencils? Even Crayola makes some colored pencils or Prisma. Col you know, you, 
you're going to want to see what you've got already to play with and then if they're not going to work out well because there are many different grades of colored pencil absolutely but you might as well try and see what you've got if not we have the 36 pack of the kaiser craft on sale now what does a colored pencil look like when you just color it well let me just go down here and just color just as if you were going to color okay so that's a colored pencil, just kind of colored in. Can you see kind of the lines and the, and the coloring? It's nice and smooth, feels great. But can you see those lines? I want to get rid of those lines. So I'm going to color, did I use this one? I'm going to color next to it. And this time I'm going to play with something called Gamsol. Gamsol is also known as mineral spirits. I don't know why they call them mineral spirits. I don't even know exactly why it's called Gamsol, but it's what blends and smooths colored pencil. It, it takes away those lines and makes it look amazing. Now, this bottle of Gamsol has on the top of it a very nice little spongy top. A lot of them do not. You really want to get one with the spongy top and yes we do sell this and the reason why you want it with the spongy top is because you are going to be using oh i need to sharpen i did not sharpen you are going to be using paper stubs see what i'm doing i'm sharpening this is a paper stub what is that it's like a pencil made out of paper and my sharpener is a sanding block and then when this is no longer is sandable you rip it off and you start with a new one so all this is, is compressed paper. And when you put it into your Gamsol, it's going to absorb, can you see the color change? So if I stuck my whole little paper stub in my bottle, that Gamsol would just go zoop right up because the paper is so absorbent. So you don't wanna do that because you don't wanna waste your Gamsol. So having the little sponge on top, very, very helpful. Now I'm going to come back here and I'm just going to kind of go over one of these. And I don't know how it does it. It melts it. I, I, it, I don't know. It just all of a sudden changes it and it makes it smooth and creamy and you lose the lines from coloring when you use the Gamsol on colored pencil. So Gamsol is your friend and it really does make coloring very very simple i would say colored pencils and watercolor pencils are probably one of the easiest ways to learn to color when you're just starting out now i'm going to take my water or my my colored pencil and i am going to put a line of color right next to my my stamped line right next to my stamped line Can you see that line of color? I just butted it right up to the stamped image, right on the inside line. I need to leave white space. If I'm gonna have a three-dimensional look, I need to leave a little bit of white space. So I'm gonna take my Gamsol, dip, and then I'm gonna work that color out. And I'm gonna pull it out. And my balloon is then going to have that shading, that dark tone, that mid tone, and that highlight. But all I used was a paper stub and a colored pencil. It's that easy to do if you leave yourself enough white space or negative space you've got to have a place to move that color to give you that dimension and i suppose if i wanted to if i wanted even more dimension i could come back with a darker red pen or a pencil and go back over that line that first line that i did and so i just went over that line just a little bit and then I could pull that out, not a lot, just a little, to even give the balloon more dimension and definition. 
Look it, it just is easy peasy mac and cheesy. You really can do this, honest. Just go in there. And my balloon looks good. And all I did was take Now I'm going to go on this line and here so I just drew a little bit of the blue and now I'm going to flip my flip my stub around or sand it because when you change color you just sand it off. Sand it off, and then a little bit of Gamsol. So I'm just going to dip it right on in. And you can see that it's absorbed some because it's changed the color of my pencil a little darker. And then let's go in and let's grab this blue. A little bit more Gamsol. To make it move. And I think I'm about good. Super cute, right? And all I did was, let's put a little more in there so I can do it again. All I did was pull that color and smooth it on out. That's all I did. And not hard, but it is highly effective. And it does look like you've alcohol inked it. Without question, it does look like you've taken Copic markers or Spectrum Noir and you've used three markers to get this look. You used a dark, a mid-tone, and a highlight, but I didn't. I used one colored pencil. So Gamsol is very effective and colored pencils are effective and a lot of you already have them. It might be one of the very first things you bought when you started crafting was just a set of colored pencils. Try with them, play with them. Let's do, um, let's do a purple real quick. All you can do, it's paper. Grab some stamps, stamp with your memento, grab your Gamsol and your, um, your pencils and, and play. So I'm gonna go on this far line here. So this is a really light lavender. and I need to sharpen. So this one's been used. I'm just gonna tear it off and start again. So you can see how long the stubs last you. And you can even buy the stubs all on their own. But we're selling the Gamsol kit so that you get the stubs, you get the Gamsol, and there's two different size stubs. And you even get a book of instructions of exactly what I'm showing you. I'm going to put a little Gamsol into my top, dip, and then let's move that purple. So this was really light. When I start to move it, it really lightens up. See how light that purple is? So I might even go in and just add a little bit more color to fill in. Take my Gamsol again and blend that on out. So I might leave quite a bit of this white. So there's the beginning of my lavender balloon. But now let me take a really dark purple 
and go on that inside inside line can you see how I took that really dark purple and went on that inside line and now let's move that out a little bit with the Gamsol I'm not sanding it because purple is purple and now I have got even more definition Very cool, right? And easy. So, a lot of the stamps that are in the sets with the Arc on Wild that go with the Reveal are stamps that you're going to want to just use your colored pencils with. Something easy. You can certainly use your Copics or your Spectrum Noirs or whatever alcohol ink markers you have. Sure, and you could palette paint as well with your Tombows. But the images really do lend themselves to either watercolor pencils or a regular colored pencil with the Gamsol. And that does give you the most beautiful look. And that again is using from my set. And that is how we made this card. So we used the, the party hat and we used the balloons and we used the wheel. Oops. There are the party hats. The balloons we just stamped on paper to make our own background paper. And then the wheel. And that's what we're going to go to next is the wheel. Are you ready? So I'm going to put this aside, but not lose it because it looks really good. We'll do something with it. <laughs> I'm going to put this over there. And we are going to play with some dies. Now, if you have must-haves by me, my simply defined must-haves. If you have the circles, either set, there is a, a size in here that will work to do this. If you already have a set, then you can absolutely use them to do this. However, Arkham Wild has two dies. Actually, I think they have three, but the pinking and the, and the scallop that work perfectly with their wheels, and it has the little place for your brad. So I'm going to start with the die and a stamp first. And I think I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab this set, which is also exclusive. So here's your wheel, here's your illustration, and then we've given you a few more sentiments and then things to go ahead and make your own background paper with or accent with or put in between. It's easy to do. And the wheel says, carolers are singing and joy is in the air. Jingle bells are ringing. It's Christmas everywhere. So when somebody spins the wheel, that's the sentiment that they've got. And then I'll show you beautiful samples where then we've used the other sentiments to finish the card off. But I want to start with the wheel. And this is the stamp for the wheel. Now, I am going to stamp this really quick on some paper. Let's put him away where he belongs. Doop, there we go. I'm going to grab some paper and I'm going to stamp him. This is a red rubber stamp. When Arc on Wild asked me, okay, Stacy, do you want your stamps done in cling or do you want them done in clear? Because a lot of people know about clear stamps. This is a red rubber stamp and and you may remember it with a block on the back. They used to come with wooden blocks. They were permanently mounted to wooden blocks and the rubber on the bottom and you would stamp with it. But after a while, you had so many wood block stamps that storage became an issue. So a lot of manufacturers got rid of the wood block and by doing that, they were able to reduce the price of their stamps and they put a cling foam on the top. So just like your clear stamps, they cling to your block on and off and on and off. And when they asked me, do I want clear or do I want the rubber stamp? I asked them, 
Well, what are your other stamps that already are that you already sell to go with your reveal? What are they done in? And they said, well, they're done in rubber. And I said, well, then let's do ours as well and we'll be consistent. Now, with that being said, let me let me stamp and let me die cut because we'll get to the issue that I I think I have a way of making it easier. But there was one customer who commented or one you YouTube follower who commented last week on the YouTube, I think it was last week, and she said, she said, some of the best advice I've ever been given in life is listen to all the advice and then go home and do it the way you would do it. Do it the way you think is best. And that's what I want you to take away from this. The way I'm doing it may not be the way, the most comfortable way for you. Oh, there we go. Look at, isn't that perfect? Ha <laughs> ha. I'm very excited with myself. <laughs> she said, she put in her comment, you know, go listen to everybody, but then do it your way. Do it the way that feels best to you. And that's what I'm going to do today. I'm also going to cut, I'm going to cut the wheel. So today I am playing with the Spellbinders Platinum Machine. Platinum Machine. It is a wonderful machine. Why do I not have the big shot in front of me? Because I think it's important to show you all that this machine is a phenomenal machine, works just as well as the big shot. The difference is the storage. It folds down to smaller than a toaster. Well, it folds down to the size of a small toaster. And what I like most about it is that when you put the wings down, the wings go flat right onto your table base. They're not suspended. So if you put too much pressure on it, I don't worry about these wings falling off. Now, everything you need comes with the Spellbinder machine. All the platforms, all the, it even comes with a gush and a knock knock. Everything that you need comes with it. And you can even use your Sizzix magnetic platform through it. Yes, it will work just fine. So I'm taking my Spellbinders machine and I've got my platform, I have got a cup plate, and it doesn't matter if it's a Spellbinders or a Sizzix. Shh. <laughs> I've got my paper down, and I've got my die down. Now this die is a little different than what we're normally seeing. Most dies, a frame die, would be open in here. This is completely solid. So even though it's a solid die, it still is a frame die, so it's not overly intricate, which means you do not need a precision base plate to make it work. I'm going to put my do not cut on top and I'm going to send it on through. And really one cut, one roll will do. You don't need to go back and forth. It's up to you if you want to or not. It's not going to hurt anything. But pop. Here we go, with a little hole in the center because we're going to have to add a brad. Now why did I cut this? Well, I kind of wanted to show you these two together here and the stamp. So you have to decide, do you want to cut first or do you want to stamp first? And I kind of struggled with this a little bit and because it's not a clear stamp, if I've got my die cut, it's a little hard for me to line up where my center is. I've got a hole here, and I know my brad's got to go there, and I've got a little dot here to tell me that center, but it, it, I struggled lining it up. So then I thought, well, okay, I'll stamp first and then I'll cut, but I had the same dilemma because it's a closed die. It was a little hard for me to figure out where I'm supposed to be lining things up. So what I did, and again, this is where you do what works best for you. I'm going to show you what I did. I took the stamp and I took my fussy tweezers and I popped a hole right where that center dot is. I popped a hole. Then I took my Sharpie marker and where that hole is, I put a dot. Then I grabbed my crocodile. Yes, we still have a crocodile in our store. Uh, whether you use a crocodile or a hole punch or something your husband's got or in the in the cabinet outside, see I can see where that red dot is through my crocodile. I can see exactly where that red dot is. I'm gonna pop a hole right in my. I know everybody's like, oh, nope. 
Easy peasy mac and cheesy. Pop that right on out. And then instantly, I have a hole. Didn't affect anything, but you know what I can now line up? Ha 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 ha. <laughs> right? Because now I can see through this and I can see the hole here and I can, let's go ahead and let's just stamp. <laughs> I know it's a little unconventional, but it works. And um, if, if crafters aren't anything, they are definitely creative in finding a way to make it work. <laughs> it was a Tim Gunn moment. <laughs> so now all I have to do is line my, my that because I can see through it. I can totally see through it because I'm on a clear block. And one, two, three, A, B, C, and Ta-da! <laughs> I have no idea what Art Gone Wild and Jackie's going to say when she sees me do this. <laughs> and hopefully Ted over there is okay with it too. But I had to find a way that made sense. And if you've got a hole puncher, just hole punch the center of it because then everything's gonna line up easy peasy. It doesn't hurt the stamp at all. Not even a little bit. But by George, you can see exactly what you're doing. You just have to line the, the holes up. And I was able to do that without any problem. Now, I want to show you the die that actually makes up the pocket. The pocket to make. I don't want that to go too far. The pocket to make the reveal. That's what it looks like. It's got score lines all the way around so you can fold it up and close it. What is really, really important is that you make sure your paper's big enough to go around the whole thing. You need your paper to be big enough to go around the entire thing. So let's see. Maybe we'll take a piece of black paper. Okay, easy peasy. Cut it off. Again, even though, even though the die is solid, it still is a simple die to cut and you don't need to rotate and you don't need to go back and forth and you really, you don't need a precision base plate. And I'm gonna bring my Spellbinders machine back over here. Now, I love this machine with the exception of one thing. One thing, and I'm gonna tilt up because I'm gonna tell you the one thing I don't like about it and I'm gonna tilt myself back so I don't look so big. Okay, Arizona Andrew, I do not like that the handle does not stay up when I want it to stay up and go down when I want it to go down. Isn't there a way to put a, like a little stopper there? So when, cause I'm moving it back and forth and back and forth and the handle just goes up and down and up and down. And I understand it needs to go down at some point because we're gonna put it away and you want storage, you don't want that handle up high or maybe you're traveling with it to a crop well, maybe not Arizona Andrew, but one of us, but couldn't we figure out how to make the handle stay up that way when we're using it? It's easy to grab every single time. And then when we're done with it, we just tuck it down. There's gotta be a little way to do that. Please. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, now I'm gonna tilt back down. That was, that was okay. Hopefully I don't get in too much trouble for that one either. <laughs> See, because every time I do something, I've got to go get that handle up. If it just stayed up for the time I'm using it, and then you just had like a little, I don't know, a little pin or something that I push, and then it goes down. <gasps> All right, other than that, love, 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 love the machine because it's a very nice storage saver. All right, so I've got my spell binders platform down. I've got my clear plate. I've got my paper. I've got my die and my do not cut plate and I am going to send it on through. So roll, roll, roll. Do you want to go back? It's up to you. It doesn't matter. It isn't going to make a difference. If it makes your heart happy, then do it. If you just want to be a hundred, a hundred, a hundred percent sure that it's going to cut through, then just roll it back. Trash. 
and then pop my die on out and there it is ta-da that's it that's the whole thing that's what makes a reveal now you can see that there's there's score lines around the whole thing and I do have to fold on those score lines so one two three four and there is my pocket now my little wheel is going to fit right in there and that's why I like their wheels because they were meant to go with the die there's my little wheel and I don't have my brad in there yet but my wheels in there so you can see that it'll start turning haven't put my brad in there yet but my wheel is in there now if you don't take anything else from this YouTube you need to take this from the YouTube when you are closing your wheel up let's go ahead and put a little brad in there I know brads long time no see huh <laughs> Brads and die cuts were one of the very first things I like ever sold ever. So I'm going to open it up. Now with your brad, you don't want to push it down so tight. You want to leave it a little loose. You want to leave it a little loose. That way your wheel can turn. If you cinch it down so tight, you're going to make the wheel unable to turn. And that is the next thing that I want to tell you about. Same thing when you're putting your when you're closing your back up because you need to close this up because we're going to add it. We're going to add it to a card. It's going to lay right on top. Okay. When you do this, you're going to take your double sided tape or whatever makes your heart happy. I'm using Stacy tape. And you're going to close your card up. But what you're not going to do, not ever, is take the tape and attach the tape to the, to the pocket card and your wheel. If I were to do that and tape these two together, the pocket and the wheel, you are now going to make it impossible, impossible for the wheel to spin because you've taped it in place. No, you've got to be sure that when you're taping down your pocket just tape down the pocket don't have any of that adhesive whether you're gluing it whatever you're doing don't have any of that adhesive ever 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 touch the actual wheel because then it won't spin and that deflates the whole thing it's like oh you want to be able to turn it over and see how cute it is and when it doesn't spin you're like what did i do wrong Chances are you taped the wheel to the pocket because I want to be able to turn it over and have it spin. Isn't that so cute? But then, what if you wanted to mat on top of this? What if you wanted to do a mat? How would we do that? Because we only have this die. Well, true that. Let's pop out our little pieces that we're not going to need. How am I going to make a mat that's going to fit that just perfect? Okay, let's grab a piece of paper. Let's oh, I came close. Let's grab a piece of paper and cut us a piece. I think I'm even going to cut it down a little bit. Okay, perfect. So there's my paper. But you're saying, Stacy, you just told us. You just told us our paper has to be big enough for the whole die. You just said that. Yes, I did when you're making the pocket. But when we want to make a mat, all we're concerned about is making sure we get this center square cut. We don't care about the flaps because we're not going to use them at all. So let's bring our platinum six over and the Spellbinders platform is down, the paper is down, 
the die is down. I don't care that I'm not centered. I don't care that my flaps are, are off and that they're not covered by paper. Put my do not cut plate and send it on through. And then if you really want, you can send it on back. Totally up to you. All right. Pop it on out. And there we go. Now you can still see the crease lines. And those are important. Those crease lines are important because that's going to be kind of your guide of where to start cutting. Now you may have a trimmer and would want to do this with a trimmer so your edges are a little straighter. I'm a freehand girl. So I'm just going to kind of do my best. to just freehand it. Remember, I told you we didn't want those flaps because we're going to use this as a mat. And now I can take it and put it right over the top. But it's almost the exact same size. So I need to trim it down just a wee bit just a wee bit. So let's take it and trim it just a little bit down. So that it acts as a mat. And again, you'd be far more precise with a trimmer. But what fun would that be? See what we've got. Oh yeah! Haha! <laughs> See, look at how good that looks! But we have to attach it, which means we have to undo our brad, pull it out, and line this up over the top, and put our brad back in. And I would absolutely, whoa, tape it into place. So let's just add a little bit of Stacy tape and tape it into place. And now, now I've got a mat. And I'm just going to put a little bit here and there just so it stays. Okay, what happens if you've got this really thin piece up here, but the only size adhesive you've got is wider than that? This is double stick adhesive, you know? This is double stick adhesive. So, what happens if all I have is that, that thin little piece up there that needs to get adhesive on it, but I only have a wide piece of tape? Don't put it down and then try and cut it. No, don't try and snip this off. This is double stick adhesive. So all you have to do is peel it off and then fold it back in onto itself. And because it's double stick adhesive, it's still gonna stick. Don't try and cut it to make it fit. Just use it and peel it back onto itself and fold it back onto itself. So I'm gonna line this up and put this down. That looks pretty good to me. Oh, I'm very happy, 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 but maybe I want a white brad. That red no longer, <laughs> the red no longer works for me. <laughs> Put my white brad in there and open it up. Oh, right? Super cute. But did you see that on ours, Try it with this paper. On our sample, we took 
and made background paper so it all matched with the stamp, with that balloon stamp. So if I wanted this to have a stamped image on it so I make my own background paper, all I have to do is take the die, not that my balloons are going to go with it, but take the balloons or whatever makes your heart happy, the words that go, we can do words straight across. Let's bring out my gush. You know what? What if I wanted it on the whole thing? Is that big enough? No. Let's use this piece right here. And let's stamp some balloons. Do I have a happier piece of paper? Do I have a happier piece? Oh, maybe the purple. How about we do the purple with the balloons? So I can take my balloons. And just start to kind of one, kind of two, maybe three. How about four? Five and six, and I'm just stamping balloons all over my paper. Maybe one more, maybe that's enough. We'll see. And maybe I'll even stamp a little bit of a balloon off, off here just in case. Soup. Okay. Now I got balloon on my gush mat. Can you see I accidentally stamped on it? Balloon. Just take a baby wipe, wet cloth, whatever, and that's going to come right on off. Don't worry about that if that happens. So now I can take my paper and cut it down to the size I need. Make sure that it's big enough. That looks good. Put that over there. Bring it back. Put my plate down. Put my paper down. Put my window down, and because my, my reveal is here, I want to make sure that my balloons are going in the right direction. So always make sure your balloons are going in the right direction, or your words are going in the right direction if you're going to make your own background paper. And let's run it through and see what we get. Because now I'm taking the stamps and using them for a totally different purpose. Now I'm making paper with them. Not just stamping and coloring in to use it as an embellishment, but actually making paper. All right. Ooh, put this over. So if I did that, and then I took my, where's my Wahoo Kachu stamp? Oh, where's my Wahoo Kachu? No, that's not it, that's not, oh, here. Then I took my Wahoo Kachu, and I inked that up real quick. And a piece of white. No, I'm gonna die cut first die cut my white, die cut my wheel first, bring my back over, cut my wheel out, 
down we go send it through if you want to bring it back it's entirely up to you you don't have to wheel out. Ha. Now grab my Wahoo Kachu and my Holy Smokes Artichokes. Put my wheel down. It's got the hole in it. My Wahoo Kachu wheel has got the hole in it. Grab my, my ink. <laughs> Don't know where I put it. Anybody seen it? Hello? <laughs> hmm. Oh, right there. Baby wipe was on top of it. Ink, ink, ink. Put my lid on. Line up the hole in the die cut with the hole that's in my stamp. And go one, two, three, A, B, C. Now I've got my Wahoo Kachu. I've got my plain card stock that I made into pattern paper. Fold, 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 fold. Put my wheel inside. Line it up. Grab my little brad. I love it with the balloons. I do, I do, I do. And then close up the back side by not taping anything to the white wheel. Just close it up. And you are good to then continue to create. The reveal wheel is that simple. And it's interactive and it's fun and it makes you look like an absolute rock star when you give something uh, give a something away that you've used the wheel with whether it be a layout or an embellishment on a cute little mini album because if you've got the mini album well then they have the opportunity with all your flaps and everything else that you're doing all your pockets and your flaps add a reveal to your mini album And I've got the balloons, oh my gosh. Right? Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Holy smokes, artichokes. It was easy peasy mac and cheesy and wahoo could chew. So this is what we're working with today. Makes it simple, makes it fun. And besides the three sets that, um, that they did for me, which one of them is the is the Stacy Brations. And then two of them are for Christmas. And they're really beautiful. The illustrations are just gorgeous. Everything about them is lovely and you can do so much with them. They also have a large amount of stamps already done for the wheel that were already done. So you really brightened my day. And the samples that we have to show you with these are beautiful. Here's another Christmas. So you could take this Christmas and my Christmas and marry them all together. It's all meant to work together. You can mix and match to your heart's content. Take that birthday and finish the card and do a birthday cake on the bottom of the, the card that's going to have the, the balloons reveal. We've got for dad, it's your day dad. Catch all the fun you can. They're just cute. Happy Father's Day to a real great dad. Here's Happy Mother's Day. And when you start to put them together, because I didn't understand when I looked at these what they can do. But when you see them put together, do I have? Okay, so I have. I have this one when I get, oh, it's, it's, it's the next one. Although they, no, it's not the next one, but I'll get, when I get to it, I'll show you. Here we have Easter with all the Easter eggs and the Easter words and 
Um, the Easter Bunny is coming your way and the sentiment in there, so cute. But again, I struggled with them when I first saw them because I didn't see how something like this could become this. This set made this card, right? Pretty good, but this set also made also made this card, this set. So once you get playing with them and you start coloring and you start using all the embellishments to do them, once you have the wheel and the reveal, then you just start to play. They're beautiful, right? I wasn't supposed to show you those right away, but I wanted to give you an idea of how you take these sets and make them so much more than just what you're looking at. This is just the, 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 the beginnings. You have to start and then you have to play. Love the get well. And look at the cute snowman. So these are all the sets that will work with the reveal um, die and the wheels that they have. And again, they've got the scallop and the pinking. And if you have a must have circle set, you can use them. Just remember, you're gonna have to put your own hole in for the brad and the sizing might not be exact, but it, will, it should work. You should be able to, to use one of my must-haves. But these were really meant to go together. And um, so it's nice. Although if you're budget-minded, and I understand a lot of us are, I'd rather see you get the pocket if you already have the must-haves. Try your must-haves. I guarantee you there's going to be at least one size that is going to work perfectly in here. Because the window is so large, there's room, there's there's some, some variable in there. So you should be okay with a must-have circle, whether it be the 2017 or the 2018 version. And then I have the Gamsol that we'll have for sale. Gamsol kit that we'll have for sale on the YouTube Yummies. And somewhere under here is the, the dies. So again, I'd rather see you get this because this you need if you already have this you're going to find a size without any problem that's going to work yeah you're going to find a size without any problem that's also going to work but if you don't have this and you want to get the two that go with it then it's meant to go together you know so it's it really is meant to go together probably should have tilted down a little bit further sorry about that guys okay um, also, I have in front of me the eye zinc colors. Now, the reason why I have these in front of me really quickly is because on several of the samples, we used eye zinc to do the glitter. What is eye zinc? It is a phenomenal glitter that it's a paste and it dries almost instantaneously. So you put it on. Let it sit there. Give it a second or two. About a minute. Let me do another color. So a lot of the samples, if you see glitter on the sample, we use the eye zinc. Okay. My silver is almost dry. Can you see that? By the time I put my gold down, my silver is almost dry. And just so you know, I broke two of my nails. <laughs> I go get my manicure today and two of my nails are broken. I took my Tombow marker and a little bit of my silver eye zinc. I colored in where they were broken with the Tombow and a little bit of eye zinc. It dried super fast and I bet you'd have a hard time knowing that these two fingers actually only have half of my manicure left. <laughs> Tombow marker and a little bit of eye zinc, and I fixed my nails. Love the eye zinc because it dries so fast. It's like that, and the coverage is amazing. Yeah, look at that. When can you do that with a stickles? Ever, ever. 
ever. So we'll put the eyes ink on a YouTube Yummy, even though I didn't really show it today, but a lot of the samples we used with it. So now let's get to the samples because that's the fun part, but let me get the eyes ink off my fingers so I don't mess up the girls' samples. Are you ready? Okay, I've got quite a few. So, so again, I already showed you the Darling Wheel Card. Love, love, love. And then here is another one from the exact same set that I showed you. Love, love, love. And here is the snowman. How cute is this, right? So the snowman comes with it. The little, um, the the stamp to do, I think this little, little snow is in there. We covered up the brad with a, a stamp that did a little snowflake and just cut it into a circle and put it right on top of the brad. How cute is that? Oh, and here's another one with sending you sunny thoughts. Now this, this isn't using the reveal at all. So we just stamped on it and cut it out and kind of frayed it and tattered it. So if you love the stamp set but don't feel like doing a, a, a reveal wheel, then don't, just stamp it and put it on. You don't have to have it so that it moves, so that it's interactive. Look at the get well. They're so cute. And here's another one where no reveal at all, just took all the elements of the stamp set to use it to show that you don't always have to use it for a reveal wheel. You can make a beautiful card just on its own. Okay, next set of samples because I've got quite a few. Here's the Easter. And this one is done with a straight wheel. I'm worried about getting my fingers on it, but this one's done with a straight wheel. So the Easter card. I already showed you our make and take for today. Here's the dad card. Watch the fish. Oh, is that so cute? The fish turns with the brad. It's, it's uh, glued onto the brad. Is that so cute? So for dad, here we have for baby. And the backgrounds here were done with oxide inks. How cute is that for baby? And here's the birthday. That would actually go well with my sets. So they stamped and colored. And it looks like just basic markers this time for birthday. And then I'm getting there. And then we have, this is from my exclusive set. I told you the illustrations were beautiful. And here's the fa la 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 on the bottom. All the little elements, the extra little elements that you get to use with it. And then here it is again, only in a different format. Tis the season to be jolly. Isn't that just a beautiful card? And this is from my exclusive set. So the only place you're gonna find that is here. And then one more, oh no, two more with my exclusive set. And stamped fa la 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 all over the top. So cute. And then this is from the Stacy Brations for your graduation. Again, the balloons are all stamped in and you've got your diploma and your hat. And you can do them with the Gamsol and the pencils to make it easy peasy. You did it. Congratulations. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> and then my last set of stamp samples. See, I think this is beautiful. To me, I had a hard time. Is that it? Where's the, maybe it's one of the first ones I showed. There was, oh, here it is. So here's the set. 
and I just couldn't understand how it would be done, how it would look when it's done, right? Because you look at that and you're like, nah, until you look at this. And oh my gosh, this is beautiful. Beautiful, and the flower turns with the wheel. From this set, you can do this. So simple, so easy, I promise. And then from my other Christmas exclusive set, that's got bells and candles, a little more traditional, And the season's greetings was done with a stamp on the background, done on a diagonal and then cut out, just stamped and stamped and stamped and stamped. And here's another one with my exclusive set. And again, we just stamped and stamped and stamped and stamped across because all you're trying to do is make a background paper, but it looks so good. And same here. I'll see here's some of the eyes ink. Well, actually a lot of them have had it. But here's the holly on one of my sets and we just stamped and stamped and stamped and stamped. And the candles come with the set and the happy holidays and then there's your reveal. These are just darling. This is not part of the exclusive set. This one's on its own. Oh, okay. And then this one. So here's the set. Kind of meh. Eh. Eh, not crazy about the packaging, but oh my gosh. I think if you put this on the packaging, oh, it would stop people in its tracks. This was made using this set stop people in its tracks. You've got the, the definition words under here. You've got the two flowers. You've got the reveal wheel. And it is beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna tilt on up. I'm gonna say I hope this loads. No guarantee. This is my second time doing this one. I'm gonna tilt on back. And I'm gonna say, okay, everybody, it's me, Stacy, at Scrapbooking Made Simple. Where are you gonna find all of these great products? Some of them very, very, very exclusive, like the Simply uh, Defined Must Have Circles or the three sets of Arkham Wild Reveal Wheel stamps that were done just for us. You're gonna find them at scrapbookingmadesimple.com or better yet, come see us. This week we have had Marilyn and Maine come in and see us. And then somebody came in yesterday when I was up here taping the first time. I am so sorry I didn't get to come downstairs. I was taping and I didn't know you were downstairs. I feel so badly, but I know that Doris helped you and she did the very best she could. And she said you left happy, so I'm sorry if I disappointed you. I was up here um, taping. I felt terrible. I wish the girls would have knocked, but, but if I'm in the middle, I'm in the middle. <laughs> so anyway, maybe I hope you get back again and I will do my best to be there when you come in, okay? Big hugs. All right, so scrapbookingmadesimple.com. If you can come into the store, please do come see us. And next week, next week is our anniversary sale and it is a big, big to-do. So stay tuned, more about that coming up. Bye everybody.